With Baylor football season being 10 days away, there's no better time to count down the 10 best Baylor football players in 2022. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I'm Drake Toll alongside Cameron Stewart. Both of us are inside the Bears along with Sports Illustrated. We want to thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. And today's show, I can assure you, will not go off the rails. We're going to tell you, uh, we're going to tell you the (laughs) top 10 Baylor football players in 2022 and five breakout players to watch out for. Cam, without further ado, number 10. By the way, the folks at home, we also hope you guys. We're halfway through the first week of school. Congrats, you guys! You're making it. You're close. It's going to keep raining. Neither of us have seen each other's yeah. lists before this point in time. Also, Cam got a job. Congrats, Cam! Neither of us have seen these lists before, so we're gonna we're gonna blind react. Cam, the number ten best Baylor football player in 2022. Number ten. I actually had to, I did this in pen drink. So I literally crossed this out, crossed another name out, put this name in. Uh, I just wrote about him from inside the bears, among other people in that article, Bryson Jackson. Wow. Bryson Jackson. The Jack position. Yeah. Yeah. I loved him and Matt Jones kind of rushing the quarterback towards the end of last year. And I think he's a little bit better of an athlete than Matt Jones is. And he's going to a position in the Jack that I think he's going to thrive in a little bit more than, than what he was doing last year. And he was kind of just in like a specialist down in distance specialist. He wasn't on the field every play. Uh, I expect him to be on the field most plays this year. I think that's your starting Jack. I Bryce think Jackson. Bryce Bryson Jackson's a guy that a lot of folks have not heard much about. He's a name. I thought that, about making him a breakout guy. Thought uh, about uh, go on that point. I think he he would be a great candidate for a breakout guy and certainly a great candidate for number 10 in a bigger role defensively this season where Baylor's got to replace. I mean, you, you've got Terrell Bernard and Jalen Petrie that are massive holes wherever you slice it. They, there's got to be somebody there. I, is it Bryson Jackson? I mean, maybe, but number 10 Bryson Jackson for you. Yeah. So you can ask, you can ask him. I was queuing you up there to ask him my number 10. <laughs> Well, you know, Bryson Jackson's my number 10, but I'm what I'm really curious about, Drake, is your number 10. My your number 10, this is, I'll say this, these are the hardest ones because the, at the end of the list, you start thinking, oh, who do I leave off and how do I rank these? My number 10 is Jacob Gall. I think Jacob Gall okay. is probably the second best offensive lineman on Baylor's team. I know a lot of people have a lot of confidence in the O-line. Here's why I have such a solid O-lineman at number 10. I think that unit is so good in general. Toward the top of the list, what you'll see are a couple more guys who are going to be a little bit more individual. So my 10 is Jacob Gall, who I think is is almost certainly, he is a Big 12 preseason offensive lineman, first team, all preseason, whatever, whatever. And I think he's going to be, he's going to progress really well this season. But he's at 10 for me just because I think Baylor's got so many great guys coming back. And there are other players in the one through nine spots that I have a little more confidence in, especially individually. Meaning, Cam, 10 comes to nine. Who's your number nine? He's a beauty, that number nine. Garmin Randolph, number nine. Mm. And we mentioned off the air before this that this was tough. This was yeah. tough to do a top 10, which is good. Um, and Garmin Randolph, I think, is the prime reason why on my list. Because you think about Garmin Randolph, and he's not the first name you think about. No. But you think... A pretty good year last year. They should set up for a good year this year, especially with all the attention going on some of the other guys on the line there. But only number nine. That doesn't mean I think I think he's going to have a, a pretty big year. There's him and another guy who plays in a very similar position who gets talked about a lot now, who I think will have quote unquote breakout years. That is nationally guys that we already know. So uh, the other one I have a little bit higher up on the list. That's a little tease for you. So Garvin Randolph, number nine. Drake, up over to you. My number nine is Christian Morgan, one of the most experienced returners hey, in the secondary right. this season. I'm going I'm to put him at nine because I still don't know if I have complete confidence in him being a top five player on this team, and the defense is really going to struggle in the secondary. I love what he did for Baylor. He's a great leader for the team as well, one of those single-digit guys. I think Christian Morgan's absolutely a lock for top ten on this team. He's still at nine, though, because of my... Ah, how good is the secondary going to be? So Christian Morgan goes to nine for me. 
I'm going to give you my eight before I get your eight here, Cam. It. It's your show. My number eight in the top 10 Baylor football players in 2022, quarterback Blake Shapin. Blake Shapin lands okay. at eight for me. If we're doing ceiling of guys, Shapin's in the top three without a doubt, in my opinion. But just best football players on this team. He's in a great spot to be a great football player, but we still have not seen as much out of him as we've seen on my list of a lot of the guys in the one through seven spots. So the fact that he has such a smaller sample size than so many of these guys is why I've got him at eight because he could go out there and be the next Zach Wilson or he could go out and be seventh year Charlie Brewer. And I, I don't think he will be, but there's still that realm of possibility. So I've got Shapin in my eight spot. Who you got? I, I agree. It's tough to leave Shapin off the list at all, even though everyone else I think that I have on here, and for probably you as well, we have seen a lot more out of. But my number eight, Sugar Bowl hero, Al Walcott. Mm. Al Walcott. So moving into the star position, little Jalen Petrie action. Her, I know you've heard it. A lot of guys, a lot of his teammates talking him up in camp, thinking, yeah. uh, you know, he could fill in that role pretty admirably, almost, almost like for like. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be an All-American, but he does fit the build. He's not the fastest guy on the team. So maybe that move away from just strictly corner on the outside is probably a good thing. Um, not to say he's slow, but he's not JT Woods or Kalen Barnes, AKA the fastest guys like to ever run forties ever. Uh, but uh, I just think he's going to get a lot more time on the field this year and is going to have a lot more chances at playmaking ability. Weirdly enough, I think he's going to have more chances to make plays in the star than he did covering on the outside. Al Walcott is at your eight. Who's at your seven? Oh, you want me to just go to seven? All right. You did the snake last time. That's true. Uh, this guy who's already been on your list, Jacob Gall, number seven. Hmm. Tough to tough to break out as a uh, as a center, you know. And I, it's basically for all the same reasons you had. Second best offensive lineman. It kind of hurt me knowing that that's the most experienced unit. To I almost had three offensive linemen on here. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just say it because the other one was Grant Miller, who was like eleven. Uh, him and Matt Jones, I'm not going to put him as a breakout guy because we know, you know, he's not coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, he's a really good player. Um, but Jacob Gall is in that same vein. He's on all these watch lists this year. Uh, obviously, like you said, that's the best unit that Baylor's going to have. Maybe not the most sexy uh, in terms of what you're seeing in the box score, but definitely the most reliable. And Jacob Gall, big reason why. So couldn't leave him off. He's at number seven for me. Your number seven, Greg? Uh, Got to be Jackson Player. Player is someone okay. who would be in a okay. lot of top threes, top fives. He's at seven for me because we've never seen him play in a Baylor jersey. He's looked yeah, solid through true. fall. He looked pretty good. Uh, but again, haven't seen him in live action for BU and the rest of these players we have so far. So I'm going to go Jackson Player, my number seven. Although another guy with great ceiling who would be higher in most Baylor fans' lists. Your number six, Cam. Number six, I already mentioned, Mr. Blake Shapin. Same reason of the ceiling thing. I wish I could put him in the top three, but can't yet. Right. I love what we saw from him last year, though. I think it opens up a whole different playbook for Baylor, uh, which is great because you don't return any of your guys, basically, who got touches out of the backfield last year. Uh, so, and we've heard, this is another one we've heard throughout camp, both from the receivers, from coaches, from Blake himself. They're going to try and air it out a little bit more this year. And it might not come right away, but I think he's, I think he's going to be a heck of a heck of a passer. The Charlie Brewer comparisons are pretty good. Accurate guy. I think Blake's got a little more zip on the ball than Chuck did. Chuck never had the biggest arm. So uh, I think by season's end, we could have him in like the top two of this list. Yeah. Uh, But it could all go wrong. Like you said, he could be 15th on the list, but I think he's going to traject upwards uh, I just don't have him up as high because we've barely seen him. Um, I'm going to contradict myself later in the list, but right now he's at number six. My number six is the starting punter, Isaac Power at six. People forget Isaac Power helped win Baylor a Big 12 championship game. Baylor might not win oh that game. Oh, my God. Did you say Isaac Power? I said literally Isaac Power. My, literally, my headphones came out. I said Isaac wow. Power. That's he's a good pick. six. Yeah, punter. That's a good pick. The punter in the top six. Oh, I don't a good pick. I just thought we were doing football players. That's all. Or what are you like putting a punter outside of that realm now? 
I'm just kidding, Drake. Oh, okay, okay. I'm I just kidding. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go power He's six. smaller than you, but. Yeah, also true. Most people are. Uh, so am I, but he's probably bigger than me. Uh, yeah, yeah power at six. He's the best punter in America. Probably That's not, not actually. He's a pretty, pretty darn good punter. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was did. a game changer. I mean, the the play wasn't quite as big as uh, Jaron McVay's, but it's right up there, dude. Yeah, multiple times. He gives Isaac- up 10 more yards. That game's over, and not in a good way. Dunzo Bunzo. That's it. Uh, Cam, before we get into our top five here, I got to tell the folks home about Bet Online. You, you ever use Bet Online? Yeah, I have. It really what? breaks it down for dummies like me, which I like. What do you think? Big fan? I'm a big fan. Yeah. What do you like Run most about Bet Online? I, I just told you that I'm not good at betting. You threw some numbers at me the other day about your Little League World Series parlay and yeah. how the Panamanian kids saved your rent for the month. But I don't Carousel. know how to do any of that. And Bet Online breaks it down easy for me. Yeah, Carousel uh, and Nicaragua was game one. had uh, had some stock in that game. Very fun to watch, by the way. I Bet Online is a proud sponsor of Locked On and Locked On Baylor. I got everything. Can't mention it. It is it is sports betting for dummies and for smarties. <laughs> Whoever out there needs the sports wager, bet online is a place to go. If you're not a big wager person, that's all right. You can also check out lines, podcasts, scores, and all the latest at betonline.net. Go check it out. Number five, Cam, on my list is a guy who would not have been in my top 10 ex- until like a week ago when I actually started paying attention to Baylor football a little more closely and realized Gabe Hall is a monstrous beast of a man and is going to be not only a breakout player this next season, but in my opinion, a top five player on this team. That's a good call. You ready for my number five? I'm ready. Gabe Hall. No chance. That's real. That's true. That's wow. really true. I would show you the list, but I don't want to give it away. Gabe Hall. And you're right. He's a freak. And originally, I, I had him a little bit lower, but I was like, this dude is going to do he's gonna make some noise this year and he made some noise last year i kept talking about it talked about it inside the bears quite a bit that pass rush came on so well at the end of the season it obviously culminating in 10 sacks in the sugar bowl everybody was getting sacks everybody Braden nutley cole maxwell matt jones bryson jackson gabe hall gabe hall and i mentioned this in the article i wrote about him which is uh entitled uh Baylor senior warns of secret weapon or something along those lines on inside yeah. the bears. Check it out. Uh, but all the attention is going to be going to uh, Siaki Ika and Jackson player. Yep. And this takes me back to my freshman year, end of the art Browse era 2015, when all the attention was on Andrew Billings and Sean Oakman, Jamal Palmer had a pretty darn good year. And I think the same from Gabe Hall. And I think Gabe Hall is an even better player than Jamal than Jamal Palmer was. Wow. Gabe but Hall's the, a freak. But that's your coffee pot and drink it. That guy is freaky. He's a freak. I, I've heard things. I've heard he's a freak. Freak a leak. Yeah. So the guy's going to be big. Gabe Hall's my five. Number four, DD all day. Dylan Doyle in the four spot. He is going to be a top five player on this Baylor football team without a doubt. That is objective. He's got to be on your top five, too. I got Doyle at four. I think the three guys in front of him are probably going to produce at a – at a more vital rate for the positions that they're in, and that's why he doesn't crack my top three. But at the same time, Dylan Doyle is the he's an anchor of this defense. There's not really once you get past that defensive line, he's the next best player. He's going to clean up a lot of plays and make a lot of tackles this season. Get ready for gaudy stats. Drake, it hasn't been the first time; it won't be the last time, I presume. By number four, Dylan Doyle. Yeah. Former Iowa Hawkeye, current Baylor Bear. Uh, I just think he's so sturdy, dependable. Like, he reminds me of maybe my favorite Patriot outside of Tom Brady. Teddy Bruschi wasn't the fastest guy. Never, uh, like, wasn't the best linebacker on his team, but was so dependable. It's always on the field and always made the right play. You're never like, oh, Dylan Doyle bit there. Or what is Dylan Doyle doing? You know, he's not getting the getting the sacks or getting in the backfield, but he's always making the right play and he's versatile. And I love him like a brother. Dylan Doyle at four. And I, That's another one. I, I, I keep wanting to take people in my thought process. I almost forgot about Dylan Doyle because we've been hyping up these other guys and rightfully yeah. so, 
the, the defensive line, the offensive line, Al Walcott's going to step into a bigger role. And what are you getting out of running back? Maybe one of those guys will bust out. What's Blake Shapin going to do? And we forget that Dylan Doyle was pretty darn good in 2020 uh, yeah. when everyone else sucked. And he continued that last year and got a couple of touchdowns as well. He's just, he's going to be the leader of the defense. Again, it's not the best unit on the team. It's not bad or anything, but it's not the defensive line. He is going to be the leader of that defense. Again, he was one of the leaders of it last year. I mean, that team was full of leaders defensively, and they were pretty darn good defensively, Drake. I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. Cam, your number number three. Top three time for Baylor football players in 2022. Who's your three? (sighs) You said that some people, some Baylor fans would have this guy in their top three, and you were talking about me. I'm some Baylor fans. And I'm, I am a little hypocritical here, but I'm putting Jackson player number three. That's weird. Cam, he's never played in a Baylor jersey. I haven't seen him. Haven't seen him in a Baylor jersey, but you see the numbers in Division One college football. Yeah. They're very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh and, and he just had a he just had a party in the backfield last year. Uh, I think led the a team in, the in tackles for loss. And what? Yeah, he, he had a P in the B. All the great ones do, Drake. All the great ones have a P in the B. And Jackson Blair definitely had every week he was having a P in the B. Yes. And uh, I get it. It's not the same level of competition. But with the dudes he's going to be with on this defensive line, he is going to continue to produce. And every again, everyone's saying, because we listen to these every day, they're like, Jackson Player can flat out play at this level. And I think he's just one of those guys who is ready for the next step. And that wasn't quite the pros yet. He jumps from Tulsa to Baylor, a little bit undersized in terms of a pro prospect. All he does is get stuff done, Drake. Okay. You know what his favorite breakfast is? Raw eggs. I was going to say pancakes, but yeah, probably. Yeah. You don't know. A P in the BJ. <laughs> it's a peanut butter and jelly, Drake. I don't party, know. In the, party in the backfield, man. Yeah, with party. jelly. I'm jelly of his party in the backfield. <laughs> Cam, go ahead. Number three. My, my number three. Here's what's interesting. You, we have the same this one and two. Move, really. We have the same one and two. Yeah, uh, I figured it's a, it's happen. objective. What? How, how bad are we, Drake? Everyone else who isn't Baylor fans yeah. are saying that too because they saw him on some list that came out yesterday. Right. Go ahead. The problem is our number three is my number three is not on your list whatsoever. And I'd like to know, I, you're going to have to give me a damn good reason why, because this guy sits in my 9 a.m. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in history of radio and television. That's tight end Ben Sims. When the wide receiver core is as youthful and inexperienced as it is, what's Baylor going to do? They're going to throw the ball to Travis Kelsey of the Baylor football team, yeah. Ben Sims. He's the number three football player for the Baylor Bears in 2022, and he doesn't make your list. No, he doesn't. And I actually think he's going to get used a little bit more this year. But it's just no, tough for what? me. It's, what gives that away? I, it's just tough for me with tight ends. I, and that's I'm not trying to rag on, on uh, Ben Sims. But Tony I Gonzalez? just think... I, unless Shannon it's Sharp? like unless it's like Gronk or Travis Kelsey who are just such matchup nightmares, George I Kittle, you don't usually give them the light of uh, the time of day. Um, ben Sims is a damn good player and is probably one of the best tight ends in the league. But I I just if things go well, the wide receivers are going to come along this year, and that's where you're going to be going to. But early on, you're going to see a lot of Ben Sims. And I just don't – I don't know if he makes as much of an impact week in, week out, as these other guys on my list are going to. <sighs> that, again, not a bad player. Uh, Isaac Power, I just wouldn't have even thought of. But Ben Sims, I did think of. I did. He would Even if I put him on the list, he wouldn't have been near this high. Three? Mm. Sims at three for me. A lot of experience. A lot of experience and a lot of touchdowns out of that guy. Yeah. He's got experience. Gavin yeah, Holmes has plenty of experience. Where is he on your list? Oh, <laughs> oops. Poor guy. Number two, and we both have the same number two and number one. Number two, one, two, three. Connor Galvin. I totally yeah. have him on my list for sure, Drake. 
My number two is Connor Galvin. Connor Galvin's <laughs> best <laughs> offensive lineman of the Big 12. He's the best offensive lineman of Baylor's team. Cam, who's your number two? My number two is also Connor Galvin. Okay. Nothing more to say here, although I am very proud of Connor Galvin because you remember two years ago, uh, that offensive line was horrific. Remember that? And people like it looked at Connor so Galvin and they were like, bad. they were like, wow, oh. when is this kid, when is it going to click? When is he, he going to get it? I mean, if he has another year like last year, that's the first round pick. Last He's tackle, first round pick. Those don't grow on trees. No, but I want to introduce number one because I want to take – I want to take you back a couple of days. I want to take the fans into my 05 Honda Accord, uh, driving back from no free advertisements, but an awesome thrift store in Waco. Central Goods. Driving Drake Connor Galvin Toll uh, back to his house on, I'm not going to mention the street, don't do it. James. And he's like, look, man, we're getting dangerous and close to four o'clock. Happy hour is going to end at Sonic. So I need to drive Drake to Sonic. No AC in the car. It's taking forever. I'm wearing my Davion Mitchell jersey. And Drake, on his phone, as always, looks up from it and goes, I think Siaki Ika is going to win the Heisman this year. <laughs> I said, wow, that's bold. I did say that. That is bold. And I said, I think there's only been one defensive lineman who was a Heisman finalist before this last year. And I don't even know if that's true. It might be more. Uh, and then we talked about a radio personality who would have liked this player. Um, but Siaki Ika, you have as a Heisman light horse, not even a dark horse. You think he's going to win it? Yeah, no. I just watched the Manti Teo documentary. And then after that, I was like, the defensive guys can win it. Defensive guys could win. Siaki Ika. <laughs> it was really unprompted, too. I did You'd tell have you to, that, like, you would have to. I mean, and Dominican Sue had to like brain dead Colt McCoy in the Big 12 championship just to get the just to get the invite. A yeah. nose tackle, right? He's a nose tackle. Vince Wilfork was good at football. Oh, great, great. Yeah. I mean, there have been great nose tackles. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing on it. How many of them do you see at Radio City Music Hall in December? Great. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Both of us number one is Yaki Ika. If there's any Baylor player who's gonna win the Heisman's probably Blake Shapin. But Siaki Ika is certainly the guy defensively that would do it. Uh, I just think he's the best player on this team. He's the largest. He's pretty nimble. He is. Uh, he's. He could do a yoga class and be would fine. Would you tap him as a first round pick? Yeah, I would. I think maybe he. He's not. He's not too old to go in the top fifteen if he dominates this season. Yeah, I would say like if you're looking on our limited college football knowledge uh if you like no season this year just guys how they performed last year that are draft eligible you can make an argument for Ika and Connor Galvin being first round picks true true um uh, I don't have anything more enlightening for Siaki Ika he's just a he's a mammoth we saw it last year first couple of games eh, I was kind of like what does he do here turns out he does it all Drake. Yeah, he does it all. He can and, He'll score a touchdown this year. I'd take that. He will that score one awesome. touchdown this year. He will. That would be awesome. I see, do you feel I, that? I'm just, yeah, why not? Yeah, why I not? Think so. I, I just, I, I can't wait to watch this defense spin. Mm. Him plugging up the run. Jackson player and Gabe Hall off the edge, getting the quarterback. Come on, dude. Good luck, everybody else. All right, that's the top 10. Before we get into our, our top five breakout players of the year. Not not honorable mention, but just breakout players. Number 10, Jacob Gall. Nine, Christian Morgan. Eight, Blake Shapin. Seven, Jackson Player. Six, Isaac Power. Five, Gabe Hall. Four, Dylan Doyle. Three, Ben Sims. Two, Connor Galvin. One, Siaki Ika on my top 10 Baylor football players of 2022. Cam? 10, Bryson Jackson. Nine, Garmin Randolph. Eight, Al Walcott. Seven, Jacob Gall. Six, Blake Shapin. Five, Gabe Hall. Four, Dylan Doyle. Three Jackson player, two Connor Galvin, and number one Siaki Apu Ika. All right, it's time for our top five breakout players from Baylor football in 2022. These are in all random order for yours. Truly, my number one, I'll go with a couple guys that are on your list. My number one is Garmin Randolph. He is the largest man that has ever existed, not named like. Mm. Gabe Hall or um, Siaki Ika. He's just, he's going to be insane. I think Garmin Randolph has a wild breakout year this year. He's a name most folks have probably heard, but this is going to be an impeccable year for GR. 
Matt Jones, I almost had him on the list here, and I think he's going to be even better this year than he was at the end of last year. No, see, you can't. That's why you can't put Matt Jones there, though. He can't be a breakout guy. He tore it up in the Big 12 who championship. Who else outside last of Baylor year. knows who Matt Jones is? Maybe. Like, nothing against him, but. Yeah, no, that, that's a good point. I, he's but, moving inside. He's moving inside, which he said like 15 times in an interview the other day is where he's more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's going to be a good player. Yeah, I just don't know if it's a breakout. He's a, I think breakout. Everybody, he's a Baylor household name. Fine. Who else? It's two common names. Um, next one that I have on here plays in the same core with Matt Jones. And I don't know how much he's going to play. We've heard a lot about him. Former four star LSU transfer, Josh White. Mm. Mm. And I, I, I actually picked him over someone I really wanted on this list, but I put him in there because I'm just intrigued, Drake. I'm intrigued as to what he gives you. He's a guy around the loved out of high school, crewed out of high school, obviously goes to LSU. Doesn't really do much of anything at LSU. Four star guy. And he comes in with all this hype when he says he's going to come to Baylor. That's a name you just haven't really heard too much at camp. And we're running out of, you know, positions to put him in every down. So yeah. I'm just intrigued more than anything. I think the upside is great for him. But we haven't really seen him consistently in major college football yet. Well, the case that I made against Matt Jones being a breakout player is a case you can make against me having Al Walcott in my yes. breakout guys this year. Yes. because. Everybody knows who Al Walcott is, but I think this is this is going to be a huge year for Walcott. He, to me, was one of the best corner. I, he may have been the best corner Baylor had last year in my mind. I just, there was never a point in time where I was like, oh, not Al Walcott. He made a couple plays. You're like, oh, Al. But the majority of what he did was really solid. Big 12 championship, or the Sugar Bowl, I should say, was really good as well. Al Walcott makes my top five breakout. Cam, your third of five breakout players. Did you not want to do another one? Didn't I do two in a row? Yeah, you did. So I'm going to give... I'm I'm gonna save a couple of my more interesting ones for later. Snacks okay. Johnson is who I'm gonna put at three though here. Lorando okay. Johnson, mm-hmm. the guys uh, all we've heard about, all we've heard about this fall is Lorando Johnson. Snacks Johnson is gonna be the guy this season. Gonna step up on the defense and just be unbelievable in the secondary. So give me Lorando Snacks Johnson as a guy who's gonna play multiple spots defensively, move around a ton, be used quite a bit by Randa and Co. Snacks Johnson is gonna be awesome. I actually had snacks on the list, but since you did it, I'm going to knock him out. And I want you to do me a favor, Drake. Will you do me this favor? Yeah, I'll do you a favor. Give me Armani. On the phone! Armani Winfield. Uh, Freshman. True freshman. Like, hella true freshman. True. I don't know exactly how much he's going to play, but coaches have liked him so far from all we've heard. Uh, Like we said, there's going to be in terms of running back and wide receiver, you can see a lot of guys getting touches these first couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah, it's something that's going to kind of figure itself out in the first couple of weeks. Um, dude's got pure talent, man. One of the best wide receiver recruit. I mean, the best wide receiver recruit they've had in years here at Baylor. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's got a legitimate chance to see some good playing time even past week three or four. So, Armani, give me Armani to break out. Is that your five? Because you also had... You also uh, had that snacks. was, yeah, but I, I cut him out, so that's just three. All right, all right. So that was four. Actually, got to be able to count. I Wait, am going. No, no, I said Josh White, Matt Jones, and Armani. Oh, okay. I didn't. I'm eliminating Snacks Johnson. Drake Dabney is my fourth of five. You love a good tight end. I love a good tight end. He's two of two. I saw somebody today post which Baylor football players are back. Two of two at tight end. Drake Dabney. Good at football. Going to catch the ball a lot more. Heck of a name. Really good name. Uh, uh, I don't know. If I get My favorite Drake Dabney story. He stops me one time. Hey, man. We got the same name. That was it. That was the interaction. Thanks, Drake Dude, Dabney. You're so cool. Thanks, Drake you're Dabney. You're so cool. Even the football players are like, that's the guy from Twitter. Yeah, well, I think it's because we have the same name, probably. Oh, I was wearing a big name tag on my shirt that said Drake on whatever. Uh, Cam, round out your... Five breakout players. Tate McWilliams, running back. I felt like it was going to be weird top to, out. Not, to not put him on. That is cheap. You know what I mean? The cheap uh, top out. Everybody was expecting it, and you did it. You you caved to peer press. Well, I'm like, someone's got to be the running back. And yeah. the popular pick is Tate McWilliams, who 
himself said last week that this could be the best running back room in the country. I think it's a little out there. I think that's a little out there, but he's biased because I, I almost put him in there because there's like, there's nothing for us to expect. Yeah. We don't expect anything. The only, basically the only two guys we saw at running back last year gone. I mean, Tay got a couple of carries uh, for the whole season and we know they're going to try and pass it more. So it's like the expectation is zero. And the last one I got, Hal Presley. Oh, guy who I've forgotten about quite a bit. Yep. Yep. But uh, Auburn guy, yep. another guy with some big hype. You know, he's not Armani Winfield in terms of the hype, but guy, I, I've heard good things about him. Hal I've Presley, about him. also on my list. He All was right. my final All of right. the five breakout players. I really think that this guy is going to be, he's going to be big this next year for Baylor. Maybe they throw in the ball five times. Maybe they throw it to him 50 times, 500. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. That'd be crazy. Be 500 nuts. times. 2019 LSU ask. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow. So I, I really do, uh, of the younger receivers, which is all of them, by the way, not yeah. named Josh Fleeks. Uh, Gavin I think uh, Gavin Holmes and Josh Fleeks, who are, both. That's a weird deal. Give me, give me Hal Presley, the guy who could be breakout. When you come back tomorrow. Um, also, I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's hour long show. Did you listen to it, Cam? I did. Like an hour 15. I did. It's your favorite part. I am so locked on this conference, dude. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Uh, uh, speaking of, what do we say? For, uh, what was it? Uh, B in the B. B in the B. Could be a lot of that this year. Party in the backfield. A lot of pee in the backfield. A lot of party in the backfield. A lot of it, man. I'm telling you. You go back tomorrow. Matt Isbear joins the show. We're talking all things college football wagering. How do you wager college football? How do you make money on it? Matt Isbear, the Matt Isbear, joins the show to talk to us all about it. I'm Drake Pulse, Cam Stewart. Thanks for listening today. Cam, congrats on your new job. This has been Always Will Be. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Come back tomorrow. Locked on Baylor.